For a dairy cow to be productive, she must produce a calf annually. Our pastoral farming in New Zealand dictates that calving dates be consolidated to a median date that corresponds to the expected pasture growth and most effective use of that pasture. Artificial breeding has placed the responsibility onto farmers and artificial breeding companies to deliver the semen to the cow. But equally important is the ability to find the cows in estrus or heat, that period of sexual excitement when the cow stands willingly for herd mates to mount or the bull to serve her. Within the cow's reproductive system, the follicle and corpus luteum develop on the ovaries in a 21-day oestrus cycle and in turn influence the hormone levels and animals' behavioural characteristics. This short sexual display signals the climax of the 21-day cycle and the imminent release of the ovum from the follicle. It may only last a few hours, but it is associated with other important events during the 24 hours of oestrus. We will trace these various happenings with the aid of this 24-hour estrus clock. Preheat or pre-estrus will last for approximately three hours, as the luteinizing hormone and the follicle-stimulating hormone levels increase in the latter stages of the cycle. It triggers the behavioural changes in the cow, whereby she will join with other excited herd mates. Preheat can vary considerably. Some cows may not even display it at all, but will go straight into standing heat. Standing heat may last for as little as one hour, or may be as long as 10 or more hours, but in general, cows in New Zealand will have a standing heat of approximately five hours. In natural mating, the bull serves the cow in the standing heat period. Passage of the sperm through the genital tract and the fallopian tubes will take about six to 10 hours, but they will be present in the tubes before the release of the ovum. The egg will remain in the fallopian tubes, able to be fertilised for a further six hours before it is reabsorbed. Ovulation and fertilisation are not instantaneous. Once the egg has been released from the ovary, it travels to the fallopian tubes, but it must be in the presence of sperm for three or four hours before it can be fertilised. Likewise, the sperm themselves must be within the fallopian tubes for a period of two or three hours before they are capable of fertilising the egg. In the six hours that is required for fertilisation, the sperm must be present prior to that event occurring. Sperm will survive in the genital tract between 24 and 36 hours. Therefore, to get them into the genital tract prior to ovulation, we can inseminate anywhere in the latter stages of standing heat. This will give ample time for the sperm to be present for that period to capacitate before ovulation occurs. It also allows the human observer time to ascertain the cow's eligibility for artificial insemination and improve the chances of seeing the signs of cows in heat and then mating them at the right time. Firstly, we must know all the signs that a cow is about to, is or has been in heat. Secondly, we should use all available aids such as estrotex. And thirdly, we should endeavour to make our observations at the most optimum time to observe heat. Heat detection, signs and methods. Do you know how to pick a cow that is on heat? And how about your staff? Let's refresh ourselves on the symptoms of cows on heat so that everybody can keep an eye out. A cow is most likely to be on heat if she stands to be mounted by other cows or her estrotech or other heat detection aid has been triggered. Other signs of oestrus include cows that are restless, perhaps feeding less, walking around more, bellowing, gather in close groups with increased body contact, sniff each other and attempt to ride each other. Take note of the whole group. Timid cows may join the group, but fail to demonstrate other strong signs of oestrus. Show scuff, saliva or mud marks on their backs and flanks, have mucus around the vulva, or may come into the shed in a different order or have poor milk let down. Knowing the various behavioural characteristics of cows that are in heat or about to come onto heat is essential for good detection. It is important for all staff to know how to identify a cow on heat and to have one person in particular who is responsible for spotting cows on heat, recording them and separating them for artificial insemination. Pre-mating heat detection. Apply heat detection aids and begin detecting and recording cows on heat at least three weeks prior to mating. Detecting and recording heats for at least three weeks prior to the start of mating will reveal which cows are not cycling, in time for you to make a difference. Pre-mating heat detection is also a great time to get everyone's heat detection skills up to scratch and allows you to anticipate which cows will come on heat when. Observation. It should be pointed out that heat detection aids are just that aids to assist in heat detection. 
It still requires good observation and judgment. It is both impractical and impossible to maintain a 24-hour vigil of the herd. So, to make the most of your heat detection observations, check during the most productive periods of activity. Displays of heat normally occur around the milking period, but observations are best done before the cows are brought out of the paddock. Spend 5 or 10 minutes with the herd prior to milking. Most will wait patiently, but those on heat will make themselves very obvious. Often cows detected on heat in the paddock will not be seen on the walk into the shed. How does the cow's daily schedule of activity affect heat detection? During the October to November period when most cows are mated, a dairy cow's working day will fall into defined periods of activity. Starting at about 11.30 at night, they will get up and graze through to about half past one or two o'clock in the morning, when they will follow this with a period of rest until the morning milking. It is in the period of darkness that the majority of cows will come into estrus or standing heat, and these will be observed around the morning milking. If all cows were to be segregated that are in season, you would find very little new estrus activity occurring in the next heavy period of grazing, immediately after the morning milking through to about 9.30 or 10 o'clock. This would then be followed by another period of rest through to approximately 12. The cows will then get up and graze again through until about 2.30 in the afternoon. Again, this will be followed by a period of rest and the majority of cows coming in estrus just prior to the afternoon milking. A heavy period of grazing immediately after the afternoon milking will not show very many additional estrus cows to those already observed at the afternoon milking, and this will be followed by another period of rest. So it can be seen from this chart that the majority of cows come in estrus around the milking period, both morning and afternoon, and observation should be confined to the period just immediately prior to milking as this is the most productive time to find cows in estrus. Immediately after the milking is another good time to observe for cows that may have come in season during the milking. The same is applicable to the morning milking, although it can be difficult to make observations prior to this milking due to lack of light. In addition to pre-milking checks, we should always observe immediately after milking for any new estrus activity. Remember that the best place to observe estrus is in the paddock, walking amongst the cows, not sitting on a motorbike. Take your time to identify those cows that are in estrus. It is so important. Accurate recording of cows on heat is paramount. Use a notebook or farm management mobile device to ensure that the right cow is recorded as identified on heat. Inseminate the cow and apply a different coloured estrotec at the next milking. Heat detection is one of the most valuable parts of your farming operation and one in which you can make a real difference. Dairy New Zealand's in-calf program recommends a six-week in-calf rate of at least 68% for New Zealand herds, with top farmers achieving around 78%. This measure of success is directly related to conception rate and three-week submission rate, and this, in turn, is driven by accurate heat detection. It's worth getting it right. Make sure that you accurately detect the maximum number of cows in heat within your herd and that all the staff understand when a cow is in heat. Other factors leading to improvements in whole herd fertility. Each year we expect four things of our cows. One, that the cow should survive within the herd all year. Two, that she should produce a calf annually within the desired calving pattern. Three, that she should produce profitable milk products. And finally, that she should get in calf in preparation for next year's cycle. The eight slices of the fertility cake are Calving pattern. Cows calve within the desired calving pattern, giving you more days in milk in the vat and allowing them the time they need to get back in calf. Calf and heifer management. Raising your calves and feeding replacement heifers to get them to regular growth targets, which will set them up for a productive and fertile lifetime in the herd. Body condition and nutrition. Monitoring and managing the herd to ensure that they are at the optimum weight and condition to carve, produce and conceive. Heat detection. Using the best tools and methods to identify and record cows in estrus before and during the mating period. Dealing with non-cyclers. Identifying and treating non-cyclers early to give them the best possible chance of getting in calf, in line with the rest of the herd. Genetics and artificial breeding practices. 
choosing sires that will achieve the goals you have set for your farm and using tried and proven methods of artificial insemination. Bull management, running and rotating the appropriate number of healthy, active bulls of the right size and breed to get heifers and tail end cows in calf. Cow health, keeping cows in top condition for maximum pregnancy rates. Consider the following targets from Dairy New Zealand's in calf program. Contact us for copies of the targets and further information. Improvements to your whole herd fertility are in your hands. Your herd is the most productive asset you'll ever own. Contact us to see how they can work even better for you. Visit crvforall.co.nz or phone 0800 262 733 for more information and assistance.